And for today, the two hands-on session, if you look at the sorry, if you look at the uh, Google Drive, there are two HTML files I put here. First one is 10:30. It's the hands-on session now, and the, the other one is the hands-on session this afternoon. If you couldn't, sometimes you miss the code I tap. You can go to those two files. It's, um, for this hands-on session section, you can go to the first HTML to look at the code I tapped. I put all the code in that file. So, okay. Then let's start. After you have the after we have ms.tmt, we will work on the data set. Olga just introduced in her lecture, which is the uh, control mixture is a spiking data set. So we have 15 runs. So for, first of all, I call in ms.tmt, there is a term called the mixture. mixture. How we define mixture? So you know the percent uh, procedure for PMT workflow. We have, for example, here we use 10 flex TMT, then you will have 10 samples, and you label the 10 you we label the 10 samples with different label, like sample one, two, three, and the sample 10. Then we label them differently and then mix them. <coughs> we put them together, mix them. So here for this step, we call it a mixture because that's how we define mixture here. So we say the all, we, we put we put all the sample together. We mix all the ten sample together. We call it a mixture. After mixture, we may do like here for here we do three replicates per mixture. So. Each meter will have three technical replicates. Because each meter, we will put each meter to the MS. So each meter is a um, each meter will have three technical runs, MS run. And sometimes we may have fractionations. So actually, we may also like uh, split the fraction. Uh, we may also split the one meter into, for example, ten nine fractions. So at that case, each meter will in, will correspond to here fractions for five. So meter is just the original meter of all the samples, biological samples you have. For this case, we have five meter, and for each meter, we have three technical replicates. And then under each under each um, each technical here is a each run fifteen run fourteen is a MS run and under each MS run since we use the since we mix ten samples so there are ten channels we use a ten flex TMT there are ten channels and uh, for each channel we will put a uh, here is not exactly biological sample because as it's back in, but when you do your own experiment, there may be biological samples. So, and then for this case, we use the UPS1, we spec in the UPS1 proteins to the background proteins. And uh, then in this data set, we know that only the spec in proteins are differential abundant across different groups. Here, what does the group mean? Condition in this data set is when we spec in the uh, UPS1 proteins, we can spec in with different concentrations. So for the first group, 0 0.123 is, is the concentration. The number here is the condition 0 0.123, 0 0.5, 0 0.67, and 1 is the concentration we spec in the uh, UPS1 proteins. Larger means we spec in more UPS1 proteins. So that's a four different concentration, which is also our condition we want to know. So then for this data set, what the question, we, the hypothesis we want to investigate is, can we, find, like, oh, we want to find the proteins differentially abundant between the two conditions. For example, 
we want to know the proteins which are differentially abundant between concentration 0 0.1 to 3 and 0 0.5. As you see, here we can imagine it's quite easy to separate these two <coughs> concentrations because the fault change is very large. The fault change between this 0 0.125 and the 1 is 8. So the fault change is 8 is quite large. So it's easy to separate these two conditions. But if for the middle two condition, which is 0 0.5 and 0 0.667, uh, the fault change is quite small, maybe below 1.5. So we can imagine when we do the um, inference, these two conditions probably hard to separate. And then for, our, for this data set, in each MS run, we also have, we use two channels for the reference. The two channels, like in MS less TMT, in TMT experiment, we put all the samples to make a master pool channel as a, a reference for normalization. Usually, like, I think most most of case people use only one uh, channel as a reference channel, but in this data set, we use two reference channels. But for MS less TMT, you can, uh, we, we can deal with like a one or two is of them. And for this data set, we will, we have, for this data set, we, pre, we pre, pre process it with two tools. As you see in the folder, we process it with um, Proteome Discoverer and the MaxCount. The same data set, but we use different pre processing tool to uh, process it. And then for, well, we will start with the Proteome Discoverer output. Um, okay. For MS TMT, in order to do the following uh, inference and analysis, we have also have some required input format. That's an uh, example of the required input format. It's very similar like MS -DES. So the color name is also consistent with MS -DES. So we need in your data, you need to give the protein name, which is protein, and the peptide sequence, and the charge of the peptide, and also, actually the PSM here is just the combination of peptide sequence and charge. And then we have, since it's a TMT data, you also need to know, we also need to give the channel. So we want to know for protein, for protein, one protein, and in one channel, what's the intensity? So each row here is one PSM. So we are for PM, each one PSM and each channel and each one, we have a intensity. That's the required input for MS TMT. So basically the required input for MS TMT is the PSM level data, which is a peptide quantification data. We need this kind of input to run the following all, all the following functions. But don't worry, uh, we also have we also build a write the converter for different software tools. You can directly convert. You can just uh, like MS does, like the protein arm discoverer. You get you they will all generate output file, and you can directly run the converter to get this required format. Then let's start with the Inside MS TMT, there are uh, three main steps. First is our preprocessing tool, it's a converter. You have the output from different software tools, and MS TMT can make the required input format for TMT, make the required input format from the output file from other software tools. Currently, MS TMT only supports. Uh, Currently, MS TMT support two software, which is uh, Proteome Discover and MaxCount. After we get this required input format, next step what we do is uh, MS TMT does is the protein quantification. Inside the protein quantification, there are two very two important steps. First is the we summarize the reporter and intensity into the pro, uh, protein level quantification. And then what we do is next step, which, which is very important for TMT data as normalization between um, MS runs. We all know what like, the advantage for TMT data is 
for within each MS run, all the samples they share, like they have, they are influenced by the technical variance, like the technical uh, variance, like they share similar technical variance because we put them in the same. They are in the. They are from the same MS run, but across MS runs, they may have different. They may be influenced by different technical variants. So we still need to do the normalization between MS runs. And in order, it's very important because we want to combine the samples from all the MS, MS runs to do the inference. Then we, in order to make the samples from different MS runs, they, uh, they are comparable, we need to do the normalization between MS runs. And then after we have the normalized protein abundance data, we can do the next step, which is the inference step. Um, in that step, we, it will detect the differential abundant proteins between different conditions. In this hands-on section, we will focus on the first step, which is the pre-processing step. Uh, we will see how the converter works for protein arm discovery and Mexico. So first, uh, then let's write, try to write the code is we have Amstar TMT and we have the data under protein data PD. Then first step, let's read the data. So here, that's the data set we want to read. Okay. Copy the file name. Okay. Uh, sorry. So it, um, so we tell them we want to read the data from data PD folder and uh, the the file name is you can just uh, copy the file name here. It, because the file is quite large, it may take some maybe half minutes if your laptop is not that fast. It will take some uh, time to read in it. If you have already, and oh sorry, I forgot that we should uh, put the read it in some variable. Let's see. We read the file, CS file, into the raw PD variable. And then let's run it. Oh. Mm. Ah, it's my laptop problem. Hmm? Okay, there. So if you have already, it's still reading it. Um, if you have, have already read the file in your R Studio session, please put the blue note. So, 
Okay, so after that, you can see under the environment, we can see the data set, which is called raw PD. Let's check. Okay, let's check what the columns it has. So it has around 50, 51 columns. So see, that's the call. That's the call. Uh, data pre PD outputs. But what we want, remember we showed example before, what we want is some data set like this. So then we need to run a converter function to get the required input. Uh, let's first do some like preliminary check, uh, see how many proteins it has. Inside the PD, the protein Protein accessions is the protein name, protein ID, it generates. We want to see how many proteins it report. So unique is uh, to get the unique protein ID, and let's just see how many proteins we have. Yes. Sorry, what's up? How many, how many uh, meter, yes. So this is not an uh, right? Yes. Okay, so that's what, yes, that's a good question. So in PD, there is, uh, they, they have a report called, uh, sorry. If you look at the file name here, that's the um, here. That's the file we read in. See the file name? There's something called multi consensus. In PD, you can create a multi consensus report, consensus report, which is which combine all the runs together. PD can do that. You have the option to to output a multi-consensor output. Uh, oh, you mean ms.tmt? Yeah, we only work on one single uh, Excel file, so you need to combine them. If you have multiple runs, like our case, this data, it has 15 MS runs, you need to combine them in, in PD or MaxCount. Version? Yeah. Uh, I think for this data set is 2.1. Huh? What? Which one? It's not yet. I remember this is uh, maybe like what, what I remember is 2.1. Because we have after that after we generate the data set we have like a new version PD. Yeah, that means that's cool. Yes. So then as you see here it for the PD file it report around six thousand eight hundred proteins. And then since we know it's a specking, it's a specking data set, so we have some specking proteins, which is like UPS proteins. Let's see how many UPS proteins it quantified. For us, uh, for the UPS protein, um, okay. When we we have a special label for UPS protein when we when um, our collaborator generates a data set. All the uh, UPS protein which has a, let's see, for example, let's open it. 
Let's see. Protein name. Protein section C. Protein session okay. for you for all the UPS protein, we will put UPS at the behind of the protein name. Here, this protein is the background protein, so you couldn't see UPS. Let's see. And then in order to pick up the UPS protein, we want to know, for example, here is the protein name. We want to know whether the, so for example here, that's all the proteins we, we print out. And uh, this protein is UPS protein, which is spiking protein. We put a special uh, UPS uh, and at the behind of uh, behind of the protein name, then we want to pick up those protein out. So what we do is we want to there is a function in R which can test. So for example, you have a string vector, and you want to know whether each element has whether the you want to know whether whether the string has UPS inside it. So for example, this string, it has UPS in, inside it, then it will return true. But for some other non-UPS uh, protein, non-spiking protein, it will return true, uh, return false. So what we need to do is we want to use this function to check whether the protein name, sorry, whether the protein is spiking protein or not. So in order to know if it's spiking protein, it will the protein name ID will contain UPS inside it. This function will tell us whether the protein ID contain UPS or not. So we want to know okay, whether it index, we call it index. So if you run this code, it we put the output in index, it will show uh, the it will show that it's a it's a vector which is a logical vector, so true 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 it means for those for this for corresponding proteins, it's backing proteins. If we print it out We see some proteins, the some false here. It means those, that protein is background proteins. And then we want to select the all the spiking proteins. Then what we need to do is we have the same one. We have the data set. We want to select the columns which correspond to the spiking proteins. And let's see. Little redundant, but it still works. Okay, I think there may be some simple way to do that. Okay, so That's we will select a subset protein, subset of data which only contain the spiking protein. You see, that's the number, the columns. This data set only have around 2,000 columns, which contain only the, the intent, the data for spiking proteins. The raw file has all the, all the uh, have the data for all the proteins, and then. 
let's see, we want to know what the specific, what the protein is. How does the spec, how do the spec in protein looks like? Something wrong here. Okay. Something. Uh, it should report around forty. <coughs> what? So, okay. Ah, uh, okay, I forgot. Yes, sorry, I forgot. It should. So, it should index. Oh, yes, that's the truth. So the index should the uh, same same length as the raw PD, the raw data. So for each column, we will see whether the column corresponding a spec in this set. And then we sub-select the subset and see the output. So here is the spec in proteins. For even though there are some we spec in. 49 proteins, but actually, if you see, they return around like 51 because there are some, they create some protein group when they do the protein identification. So, why we need, uh, we need to save it in some place, which we call it um, specking protein. SP specking protein. Let's save it in speaking proteins. And so now this SP proteins install all the protein, all the speaking proteins. At the same time we want we will create another factor which install all the background proteins. Let's see. So, for the background proteins, um, because the data set has around 7,000 proteins, we need to, if we want to run the order analysis on the whole data set, it takes maybe around one hour to run all the process. So that's why we want to select a subset of protein to do the analysis. And now, what we do here is we have the sorry. that's the how we create this a background protein. How we create it now originally we select the we put the index here, we select the spec in pro data, protein data. Now we put a, a not in front of index, we will select the background protein data. And then we select the background protein from it. So next step, we for your own data set, you definitely don't need to do this step. And just because for our hands-on session, we want to save the, save the running time, we will select only 10 proteins to run the whole process. So what we do here is we will select sample. We will sample from the speaking protein. Let's select sample six proteins and then select and then from the background protein we select 
we sample maybe four proteins. Let's combine them together. And put it, okay, let's see. Subset. Subset of protein. So in this step, what we do is we select, we sample, randomly sample six proteins from spike-in and randomly sample four proteins from background and combine together. So from now on, we will only work on the 10 proteins for the uh, protein quantification and the group comparison. So... After we have the, so then we need to select from the whole data set, we need to select the protein. So, okay. Subset. Low, PD, and so we want to select only the 10 proteins, then we, what we need is we want to know whether the protein name is protein accessions as in the subset protein. So let's put it in subset, subset PD. Okay. So now we have the data set we want to work on. Yes. Oh, okay. I know the problem here. Because automatically, sorry, we forgot one step here. Because when we read in the file, the R Studio will automatically make the column like protein ID as a factor. And when we select sample something from factor, it will select sample the ID. So we want to make the, we, if you output here, if you check the class here, it's factor, but we don't want it a factor. We want it to be some string vector. So let's put it as string. So then if you select it, it will return the protein name, 10 protein names here. So we forgot one step was, um, so that's always some error I made before is, I all, so it's quite frequently forgot that the, the it's string, it's character, but in R sometimes it will treat it as a factor. When you do something on factor, it always cause uh, it's quite easy to ca uh, cause some error. So here we just, we've got to make the factor to character. So if anyone who has the subset protein, subset PD, put the blue note on your laptop. That's a 10 protein. I think, okay, so you may select different protein as me because, so, then we have the 10 protein data set. I just want to, it's just for save time, save time. For your data set, you don't need your own data, you don't need to do this stuff. Uh, you can just start from the raw PD to run all the percent, but it takes like maybe one hour to run the, for all the code. So here we just work on 10 protein. And then we will work on the subset PD data set. So now we have the in, we have the file from protein of discover for in order to use ms tmt you need you need two files first is the output from protein of discover second is the annotation file just like um, just like ms does then you need to manually generate the annotation file 
So from the feedback that uh, other users sent to us, most time people feel difficulty is um, how to generate the annotation file. Because it's quite easy, the data file is very easy. You just get it from the protein arm discoverer. But for the annotation file, um, okay. when you need to create like the call, the, you need to create the Excel file by yourself. So here inside the data PD, you can see there is a PD annotation file which I made for this data set. Um, let's uh, wait for the, you can open like a bit, for the time, you can open the, the CSV file and see what it has called. I think if you don't have the subset PD now, currently it's okay. Let's uh, continue on the annotation, it's separate file. So, okay, um, I think someone has trouble with it. Let's just, uh, for this time, uh, currently we can first ignore the subset PD. We see how the annotation, after that, we can work on the both together. Because the annotation file is a, a separate file you don't need to worry about. Here is the data. Uh, because, okay. So for the annotation file, it, it, uh, it is uh, Excel. Just for the previous code, you can, now if you have the, sorry here, Rob, you have the raw PD, you're fine. So, okay. If you have raw PD in your environment, please put the blue note on your laptop. Okay. So, then let's just work from the raw PD. I realize it's a problem um, when you write, get the subset data. So, for the raw, after you have the raw data, you need an annotation file to annotate the runs you generate. In our case, we have, so in our case, we have file mixture. So first, in our case, we have 15 MS runs. So when you generate the annotation file, you will have a run ID, which is here. I for simple, I put it one two uh, number one two three four five. Okay, let's check. Raw PD. So in the protein arm output file, what is the run ID? They have a specific run ID which called sorry, spectral file. It's a spectral file ID. One spectral file, one MS is one run. So when you run that, you will get unique. So, okay. If you look at like this, if you run unique run raw PD spec file, it will return all, it will see here, it will return exactly 15 run. And the, here is the run ID you need to put in your annotation file. That's one very common error we saw that because some people sometimes just put the number one, two, three, four, five, six here, but in the PD file you couldn't see one, two, three, four, five. In PD file, they the run ID they describe as this one. It's the spectral file name. So in your data set, when you create the so when you create the annotation file, you need to put the corresponding this ID and the run. For example, here is too long. Uh, for for this data set, it's the how we describe the data set. Let's 
for example, let's uh, make a short rest. Run one here is just a virtual file, technical replicate one. You need to put all the long name under run here when you create the annotation file. And then next one is the meter file. Meter three, technical replicates. Here actually is meter, first is meter, second, here is the technical replicate. So what I mean is when you create the annotation file, you need a run ID, and the run ID match, must match with the PD data. The in PD, in protein on the protein on discover data, the run ID is called spectral file. So after you put the you copy you can copy that run ID in your Excel file. Now you have run ID, and for each file you all, for each run you we also have, and then for this case we have fifteen runs. For example, let's only use um, let's only use two uh, six run as an example. We have meter five technical one meter two meter five technical two meter three uh, meter five technical three. I just ignore the because all the previous one is the same. I just the last one. So, and we have another run called meter four technical one, meter four technical two, meter four technical three. So, totally there are fifteen runs, but I just use six run as a uh, as an example. So, you put the corresponding run ID here, and then. Inside the annotation, TMT annotation, we have very special column we call it meter. That's how we define that's we just defined. What do we need to put under meter? So when uh, if you open the file here, if you open the Excel file, so first we have run ID column, which is run column. Exactly, that's the run ID we saw from PD. And then we need another important column which is called meter. Inside the meter, what, how we define meter is, for example, here, we have meter file, and the meter file has three technical replicates. So all the three technical replicates, they should belong to the same meter, right? Then what we put here is meter file. Here, the meter means the meter of biological samples. All the three technical replicates, they have the same, they, co they, they correspond with the same biological samples. So then we put the same meter here. And for the meter four, we also put meter four here because the three technical replicates, they correspond in the same meter. And for the other three meters, you can do the same thing. So it's small. Let me make it. Um, okay. Uh, let's make it. Yes. Um, so you mentioned this fractionate. Yes. Does that add another? That's, uh, I will ask. Yes. Um, we don't need. That's why we say we have. A, oh, sorry. Let's make it bigger. That's why we mentioned uh, with the meter here. It doesn't. It's not. Uh, does not only work on the technical replicates case. It, case it also works for the fractionation case. So, for example, again, you have. Uh, okay. So that's for the technical case. Um, it's anyone. Does anyone understand technical case here? How we generate the annotation file? If 
then I guess I want. I will explain if you have fractionation, how you generate the annotation file. So again, you have if you have fractionation, still each fractionation each each fraction is a one ms run. For example, you have a mixture of one and the fraction one. That's just some run, run ID I create. But you can find the specific run ID. And then you have for the meter one for for each meet for each meter we will split them into for example five different fractions. Then we will have fraction two here. And the same one fraction three, same one fraction four, and the fraction five. And then you may have like the next one, next meter, which meter two, it also have the same uh, five meter, five fractions. Then what you need to do to tell MS.TMT you have fractions, you have meter column again here. So we know the five meters, they all come from the same meter one, right? Because it's basically you split the meter one into nine fractions, the uh, five fractions. So all the five meter they come from all the five fractions here. They all come from meter one. So again, you can put meter one here, one here. And uh, for the meter two fraction one, you will put meter two here. So the point is, if the five meters the, the five fractions, they come from the same meter, same sample, same meter of biological sample. You need to give the same meter ID here. So then MS that's TMT will know, oh, the, this they are, there is fractionation, and these five fractions, they come from same meter. That's how, if you have fractionation, that's how you create the annotation file. So it's quite similar, like uh, technical replicates. Well, technical replicates, you have you have meter, then you have three technical replicates. They all from the same meter. For fractionation, you have a uh, same meter, but you split them into like five fractions. They all from the same meter. So that's how we do the annotation file. So you don't need a specific uh, additional fractionation column. You only need as the meter and we will know you have fractions. So that's how we have the run meter. And for that's how we annotated the run. But as we know, like for each run, we will also have different channels. Then we also need to, for run, we will have channels. And then, for each run, each channel, we it correspond a sample, a biological sample. Then what we need to do here is for then we need to annotate what which condition the biological sample be, belongs to. So here is condition. So that's what my my recommendation is when you create the so when you create the uh, annotation file. We can read the run channel information from the PD output. So the run ID you can get it from the PD output, and the channel information you can also get from the PD output. And then you need to fill in three columns. First is the meter. We have already say we have already described how to fill in the meter column. And then you also need to fill in condition and the bell, bell replicate column. For condition, it's quite straightforward. As you have run, for example, here we have a simple uh, meter one technical run, uh, technical replicate one, uh, and then you have channel. For example, our first channel is uh, one. It's templex. So our first channel, I you can read the ID from the PD output. It's X one hundred six. 126. Then for this two, we can specify, we can target one biological sample. And then what the group, what's the condition of that biological sample? 
you can just, uh, it's based on your design. For us, the, I think for us, the meter one, the run one, channel 126, it should be long to now. So here, I think it should be down to the group one zero point one two five. So that's the group ID. If you have like for example, if you have group disease or control, you can if it belongs to disease group, you can put disease here and the control here. It's for condition it's quite straightforward. So for besides the condition, we have last very last column which is the biology for replicate. So why we have additional biological replicate here actually we want to see we want to sometimes for example the two samples they come from the same biological subject for example maybe the two samples they come from the same patient so we will expect that the two samples they have like similar biological virus than the than the other samples so for the very last color you just put whether the sample, if the sample, the, the like a biological subject ID, it's also based on how you design the experiment. For us, the very important thing is the channel and the meter. Usually, for most of the case design I saw is you can just uh, directly combine the run and the channel. Most of the time, run and the channel, they most time people don't use like the same for you can oh, okay. So, uh, for the biological replicate, uh, most time if you have some like a simple design, you just combine the run and the channel. For here I just simplified. I give the run uh, ID number, like a number one run one run two and the dot the channel. So that's how I label the biological replicate. Most time, I think you can also label that in, label it in that way. But if it's some special case, you have like a same sample, like several samples from the same patient or same donor, you can put a special like a, the specific subject ID in that column. So that's how we define the sample. That's how we define the annotation file. Um, since because we have 15 runs and 10 channels for each run, they are totally 150 columns. Uh, I couldn't do it uh, right now, but for your case, you need to do it um, row by row by yourself. And then let's read in the this annotation file. PD. Data PD. Let's put it. I know PD. Somehow, oh, sorry, I forgot. Okay. Let's just read in the annotation file. And um, let's um, okay. Let's see what the that's exactly okay. It's hard to see. Um, that's how the annotation file looks like. We have already saw the seen the CSV file. So basically, five columns, run channel. You get it. You get it from the PD output, and then you need to fill in condition, mixture, and biological replicate. Condition and just uh, your different like uh, disease group, disease or control and meter. Here, meter column indicate whether you have technical replicates or whether you have fractionations. If you have nothing, like you don't have other case, you just directly put the run ID under meter. You don't have fractionation, you don't have technical re replicates, you can directly copy your run ID under meter for the simplest case. Then we have the 
input data, which is raw PD, we have the annotation file. Then let's generate the required input. Which function we use to generate the required input is, um, let's see, PD. Oh, let's see the function name. So for PD, we write a converter, which is um, protein. Yes. OK. That's the function we use to convert the PD output to the MSDS input. Let's see if you tap this, it will give you the help page for PD, for the converter. That's the function we use to do the convert. And then we will use this function to generate the required input for, P, uh, for MSDS TMT. In this function, there are only like two required input, as you see here. One is the data input, which, which is the, let's copy it. One is the required data input, which is raw PD. Um, that's input equal to raw PD. Another is the annotation file. Let's see, annotation, which equal to which equal to annotated PD. That's the two required input you have to give it. And then all the others, there are some other parameters. They all have default setting. If you, currently you don't need to specify that. If you want to have, for example, in the, let's first use the default setting to see. That's all the, let's put it to, for example, what's the name is good, okay. Let's put it like mm, input PD. Then after that, you can run the code. Yes, if you have the subset. So if you don't have the subset input, you can use the raw PD, but it takes longer to write. If you have already generated subset PD, you can use subset PD here. So it will, because it's only 10 proteins, it will have the output very quickly. So see, I use the, all the data set to run it. That's a, here is what we, what we does inside the converter. So first is first step we remove the shared peptide. You there you there is an option in the converter you can say I don't want to remove the shared peptides. But usually as default we will say we remove the shared peptides, peptide ends. And uh, so also Okay, it takes long. Let okay for time reason. I will use the subset PD here. Sorry. Okay. See, that's uh, the step. Next step, we mainly do two things here. First is we remove the subset, uh, the shared peptide. Second is somehow, uh, I think uh, as yesterday Mina said it's inside within one MS run, sometimes they just have multiple peptide identification. They are exactly the same peptide sequence, but they show it uh, several times. We're not sure whether the identification procedure, there's something they will happen during the uh, identification procedure or something, but uh, we, here we need to remove the redundant peptide identification. That's what we do here. Ah, oh, that's another step. So, Another step is here is one big advantage about TMT data is within each MS run because they do uh, they per, they measured by the same one thing at the same time. So most of the time within each MS run there are very few fewer uh, very few missing values. For example, here there are ten channels. Most of the time the, all the ten channel there is no missing values for the peptide identification PSM. So in this case, but there are very rare cases, there are some missing values. For example, if there are 10 runs, 
maybe the ten, uh, 10 channels, channel one, two, three, four. Sometimes they will have like four measurements for the peptide M1, but there is one missing here. But this case is very rare. Um, since it's not uh, happening very rare, cut for current MS, that's TMT, we, if there is one missing value here, we will remove the peptide M from the, the specific one. But I think for the following, uh, yes. So, what are you going to be carrying two samples? Uh, like more resistance. Uh, yes. So, it will remove but very few proteins from the. Because the percentage of the missing value is very, like, um, around maybe only three uh, of. Uh, but for that case, you need to very specific. You only have one PSM, like one peptide identification, and that one peptide identification will specifically have missing value. But that is not. It's very rarely happen for TMT data. So that's why. But I think yes, you are right. It's we have. That's, I think, we are also thinking in our following work, probably we will do also impute that. But for current TMT version, we don't impute that. Oh, oh, you see. Okay, oh, okay, another option. Because for that, we also have a parameter option in, in the function. You can say you don't want to remove that. So if you look at the sorry help function here, what time is? Oh, almost. If you look at the help function here, we have one option which called uh, remove PSM with missing value. You can set it to false, then it will not remove the PSM from that one. So. For, and then let's look at what the output. Let's click. <coughs> That's the one we generate from the converter. You can just click the input PD. That's the that's the output we generate for the MS TMT. It has all the required columns, peptide, chart, PSM, channel and the biological rapid run and intensity. Here you see the intensity is before the log transformation. It doesn't do any transformation. So uh, one thing, one important thing I forgot to mention here is for the annotation file, <coughs> one last uh, thing you, is when we do the, when we uh, put the annotation uh, condition, we have if you want to do the normalization, then you will have normalization channels for each run. We will give, for example, if the if channel 131 is the uh, master pool channel, which is the reference channel, for that run, for that run and channel, we will give condition now. This, you must put a norm under condition for the reference channel. Because otherwise, we don't know which channel is a reference channel. So you need to tell MS.CMT which channel is your reference channel, normalization channel. If it's normalization channel, that specific channel is normalization channel, you just put a norm under condition. As you see here, the condition now is norm, sorry, it's, uh, how do I make it bigger? So the condition here is now means this channel for this specific run is used for normalization. If you don't have the normalization channel, we couldn't do the cha uh, reference channel based on normalization. So in order to do the 
Chad must pull based on normalization. You need to tell you need to give normalization group here. I think that's the uh, converter for PD, and after that we will. Uh, okay, I think it's time for lunch, but. Um, before during the lunch, if you have time, you can try. We have another data set which is a max count. A uh, same thing, you can read in the three files. I will put it here for max count. You can try it during the. Uh, you can try it during the lunch time, and if you have question, you can like uh, you can call me, and I will help you to do that. It's just exercise. It's very similar for it's very similar between PD converter and MaxCon converter. But for MaxCon, there is just one additional file. So for MaxCon, its output is some file called evidence text, which which is the peptide quantification, and we also need another file which is the protein group, which say. Because in MaxCon, it defines the protein group, their specific protein group. So we need to know how they, what protein groups they use. And then also the same annotation file. So for that, let, I will put it here. You can try it during the lunch time. MaxCon. OK. Read, sorry, read CSV. I think um, after afternoon hands on, we will just finish this exercise. Uh, okay, let's see. So, I will just type it here, and you can try it uh, during the lunch time. Yes. Ah. Oh. Sorry, yes. Max, thank you. Mm. Yes. <laughs> uh, it should be MQ, yes. And then. Okay. You can do that. And then we have the protein group. Protein group. Okay, so which is hmm, protein groups? I think it's the name. Yes, and then let's read in the last one, which is the annotation file. Max count. Max count. Annotation. Does the read CSV work with TXT files? Yeah. Uh, because it's read for read CSV, it just read the file which separated by tab. Okay. But you don't have to specify it in an argument. Uh, I think for the you can try to see header. So, oh, here we need to see because you want the first column, first row as the header, the column name. So its header is true. Yeah. So let's see and the annotation file. Annotation file, let's say annotated for MQ. Um, and then you can just run the converter. You have all the three files read in, and you can just run the converter, which is the, let's see, max count. I'm oh, sorry, MQ. Um, yes, that's the function for convert max count and you can just say input and then 
annotation same one and the last is the so protein group yes so let's put it here that's the code for the Mexicon converter you can try it during the you can try it during the lunch time it takes maybe 10 minutes to run it I think it's lunch time also quite have question you can call come to me during my time.